All right, I hope you're ready to hear about view transitions. So my name is Jakob Endresta Shevam. Uh, that's my best impression of a shrug emoji. And I work as a consultant and developer in a Norwegian company called Variant. And to start us off, I'm going to give you a task here. So here I have two videos. I'm going to play them at the same time. And your job is to kind of make up an opinion on which one feels like the smoother user experience. So I'm going to let these play for a little while. Um, don't think about it too hard. I just kind of want you to get a feeling, and then we'll do a, a quick poll afterwards. Yeah, so those of you who prefer the one on the left, please raise your hand. How about the one on the right? OK, good. So the majority of you agree with me. I'm glad that worked. It <laughs> would have been a little bit awkward if it didn't. <laughs> And we could have just cut the presentation. Uh, but one of the reasons why the one on the right feels quite nice is because it uses transitions very well. And transitions is what we're going to talk about today. And so before we continue, I feel like in order to do this responsibly, I kind of need to give you a sort of disclaimer here, uh, which is that what I'm about to teach you is quite powerful. Uh, you have the power to make your website feel like a 2004 PowerPoint if you want to, but I don't recommend it. Uh, but I'm not going to stand here and preach about when you should use this. That's, that's on you. I'm here to talk about how we can do transitions. And on the internet, on the web, uh, the answer for a very long time was just to hit the annoying JavaScript button. All right, that was the only way to do anything like that on the web. Um, that obviously has some drawbacks, right? And you could mitigate some of those by using a library like Swap, which helps you manage transitions. Of course, that's also just annoying JavaScript behind the scenes. And it doesn't help you with everything, right? So if you want to uh, have a transition between multiple uh, separate pages in an MPA, for example, you're screwed because your JavaScript is, is not there when you're between pages. And this is where the View Transition API comes in. So this is a quite new browser API that has good support now in Chrome and Safari, and it's, it's getting there on Firefox. Uh, and this helps you do exactly what it says. It helps you transition between different views. And so by that, I can mean, for example, transitioning between different content in an SPA, or even between different pages in an MPA. And so, I think the best way to kind of spend the rest of this lightning talk uh, is to take you through the anatomy of a view transition. And so hopefully in about eight minutes, uh, you're going to have an idea of both how this works and kind of the sort of things that you can use it for. Because uh, I'm going to go through some of the capabilities as we go. And so let's begin at the beginning. How do we actually trigger a view transition? And so this is going to depend on whether you have a single page application or a multi-page application. In the case of a single page application, it's just a JavaScript function, start view transition. Uh, that function takes a callback. So for example, if you have a function called update DOM, which changes your DOM in some way, and you want to do that update as a view transition, it's as simple as just calling it through the start view transition function. And it's actually even easier on multi-page applications. All you need to make sure to do is to include this snippet of CSS on both your origin page and your destination page. And any navigations between those two are going to be treated as view transitions. And so the next thing that happens once you trigger a view transition is that your browser starts building a pseudo element tree. Because everything that happens in this API happens in the form of pseudo elements. And so at the base of that tree, we have the view transition pseudo element. Uh, this exists only when the view transition is happening, and it sits kind of on top of your entire page. Um, and uh, this is kind of like the sandbox where everything happens. Right? So that, that gets constructed. And then your browser looks for view transition names. And so a view transition name is effectively a way that uh, we can use to connect elements from before and after the transition. So we're saying to the browser that if two elements have the same view transition name, I want that element to transition into that element when we go across the transition. And so uh, that actually comes in the form of a CSS property. It's just a CSS property that you set on your elements. And even if you haven't actually explicitly done this, chances are that your website probably has one already. Because if you go to any website in a browser that supports this API, you're going to see that as a part of the default user agent style sheet, the root element of the page actually has uh, a, uh, a view transition name of root. And so what that means is that our old page and our new page has a sort of link between the root elements. So by default, your browser is going to try to transition the root element on the old one into the root element on the new one. 
And so uh, in our case, since we only have one set of view transition names, we get a view transition group uh, with the name root. And that has a view transition image pair, which contains, as you might guess, a pair of images. Uh, so these are two snapshots, uh, an old snapshot and a new snapshot. The old one is just a static snapshot of the page, uh, how it looked like when you initiated the view transition. And the new snapshot is a rendering of the, the page that you're going to. And so I think uh, it's time that we look at a demo here. So I've made the world's, the world's uh, simplest single page application, which is just a website where you can click a button and some JavaScript runs and it shows you a new wine. And so uh, it's that simple. You have a function called pick wine, which chooses a wine, changes some HTML. Uh, and if we want to uh, call that, um, that function as a view transition, as I said, it's as simple as just wrapping it in that start view transition function. And so that means that our change is now going to happen as a view transition. And so, and this, now you're going to see that this is a high budget PowerPoint. Uh -huh. <laughs> So we're going to look at this sort of in layers here. Uh, if you look in the top left, you'll see that this is the live website. In front of the live website, the new snapshot gets constructed. And in front of that again, you have the old snapshot. And when both of these are ready, the view transition fires, and the old one fades out, and the new one fades in. And so to see what that actually looks like, you get this. So instead of this hard cut, you get this fade instead. That's cool. It's not mind-blowing, but it's cool. Uh, but we still miss two more puzzle pieces in order to make this really fly. And so the first one is custom animations. Because the animation that you just saw, where it faded out and in again, that's just a CSS animation being applied to those pseudo elements. And so what that means is that you can customize that animation exactly as much as you want. And so let's say that instead of a boring fade out and fade in, we want something loud and exciting. So we want the entire old page to fly out on one side and the new page to fly in from the other. That's as simple as just defining two animations, one exit animation and one enter animation, and then applying those to the pseudo elements. And with only those changes, the website suddenly looks like this. And the second puzzle piece, is something that we've kind of alluded to already, which is that we can have multiple view transition groups. And so, so far, we've only used the root view transition group, but we're also free to define as many uh, other view transition groups as we want by giving, uh, giving out these view transition names in pairs across the transition. And so that means that, uh, as well as connecting the root element, you might, for example, want to connect a title element and a body element. Uh, and if we go back to our pseudo element tree for a second, it's going to look like this now. So we get one of these groups per pair of elements that we have. And so that means that not only can you customize the animation uh, of kind of your entire page, you can customize the animation of each individual element if you want to. And I'm guessing that at this point, you can kind of see how powerful this is. And so uh, there's actually one final ace up the sleeve of this API as well, which is that if the browser detects that there are position or size changes in those elements, it's going to animate those automatically for you. So you don't even have to define that yourself. And so in this case, it's going to look something like this. And so I think the best way to end this lightning talk is to kind of combine all of this and show you what it can look like. And so I've made a final demo here, combining all the things that I've talked about. So I've used multiple view transition groups, uh, multi-page uh, multi application support, uh, the fact that you have these automatic position and size animations, a little bit of custom animation to fix some jankiness. You can come talk to me afterwards if you're curious about that. Quite a lot of trial and error, and just an absolutely stupid amount of repeated code. Um, because I got it into my head uh, that I wanted to do this with just pure HTML and CSS, like no JavaScript, no frameworks, no template builders or anything, which is a decision that cost me both time and sanity, but we made it. <laughs> but I would recommend, if you want to do something similar, just use Astro or whatever. Like That's going to make your life a lot easier. And so this uh, is the demo that came out of this. And so what you're seeing now is just me clicking on links. These are completely separate HTML pages, and there's not a single line of JavaScript here. There are no frameworks. This is just running on a bog standard uh, Chromium browser. And to me, this looks illegal. Like, you shouldn't be able to do this on the web, right? Like, this looks like something you'd only find on the Instagram page of a designer or something. Uh, but this is now possible. 
And so if you're interested in that demo, it's live on the internet in the form of uh, stupid files sitting on a stupid server at jacob.veen. I had that domain, so I figured I might as well put something there. Uh, my name is Jakob Enderstachelan. My website and blog you can find at jacob.fun. Uh, jacob.fun is also my blue sky handle. Hit me up there, come talk to me afterwards, and thank you very much for having me. <laughs>